Hi, I'll pick up in this video where I left off in the last. Bach is talking about the, the listener as well as the performer. So what he does is he, you know, all the, all the Lilliput professors will hate him, will be against him when he says that. You know, it's a bit, it's easier to hate me and be against me because I'm a nobody. It's harder to, it's harder for them to go against Bach because he has a name. So he'll, they'll be against him. And they'll be saying, yeah, well, on the, there is no sustain on the harpsichord. We have to, you know, add the trills. So Bach brings it into the real world. He says, they're sustained like the knock singing, singing the note, singing the note knock. That's like the the the, the sustain or, or the resonance or you know that when you play a note, it's like a Les Paul guitar is known for its sustain. So so how long the note sounds after you play it. Bach says on the clavichord as well as the harpsichord. There is sustain on the notes when you don't clip them, when you don't play them too short. And how do you not play them too short? It's when you know to give the notes their proper weight and sustain. That's when you don't clip them. And, and the very top of the roll of honor, they can feel addressed. They cannot feel like they're above this. This is something they need to hear if they are really truly interested in being proper artists and not spoon-fed babies. So Bach says, he's talking to Lilliput, he's saying on both instruments, and, and here I just say it's called, Bach says flugel, and then you might wonder how can you get harpsichord out of flugel? And uh, flugel is what nowadays in German, when somebody is talking about a grand piano, they'll call it a flugel. That's how you know they're talking about a grand piano. And, and a flugel means wing in English. And you can sort of imagine with the shape of a grand piano how that could, one could call it a wing or see it as a wing. And if you think of the harpsichords, they had that wing shape. They, they had a sort of a similar shape to the grand piano. So you could see how they'd call them a flugel. And so, and then when the forte piano comes, you can see how that followed in the, the shape, the same shape as the harpsichord. And then you can see how the term flugel will has, have transferred from the harpsichord to the forte piano and then to the more, like the, the more modern grand pianos, how that they'll have used, continued the same term because they all adopted that similar wing-like shape. So it'll have been called a flugel back then, just like a grand piano nowadays will be called a flugel. So he's, he says, you know, one instrument is better designed for this sustain than another. So he acknowledges that. But then he says, look at the French. The clavichord is not all that popular in France. And so they mostly, their stuff is mostly written for the harpsichord. And he says, despite that, they're full of ties and slurs. That's what he's saying to these Lilliput professors who, who, are, who are, 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 you know, attacking him, who hate his guts for, for you know, showing them up for who they truly are. He says, look at the French. They're writing for harpsichord. Don't use that as an excuse. They're writing for harpsichord and their music is full of ties and, and, and slurs. Even though it, it, it doesn't, the harpsichord doesn't have as the same sustain as the clavichord. And you can see that, if you don't believe me, Bach is saying, you can see it from all the you know, the bows they have in their music. 
the piles of bows, you can see that from that. And, and then he says, so if it was the instrument, explain that. Why are the French, why do the French is, um, have so many ties and slurs, even though they're writing for the instrument that w w where you have to add the trills to every long note in order to join the ideas, in order to save the notes from forgottenness or obscurity or oblivion. And then he goes even further, you know, he says, okay, let's suppose the tempo is too slow. Like these are all the excuses that those Lilliput professors will be giving, justifying their, their practices because they'll all, all ha they'll all have a reputation in society. They'll all be regard highly regarded. Every student that goes to them will think that those people are some sort of an authority, that they know something, that what they say is important. So Bach goes, it, goes further. He says, so let's say the, the, the tempo was too slow and the, the, the instrument was too bad for the proper sustain. And I, and I think in a, in a way Bach is describing my situation with this piano because of all the shortcomings of this piano. I'm kind of faced with the, with the same, like the, the, the upper notes, the balance is so bad on the piano and the upper notes, they have no, no tone, no body. It's not clean, it's not immediate and it doesn't ring true. So, so as Bach's saying, so let's suppose that scenario. The instrument is too bad and the tempo's to too slow. So all the excuses that these Lilliput professors give for getting their students to trill left, right and center. Bach says, it's still always worse to distort, to ruin a passage that should be played matte and drawn out w with a trill than to lose something of the audible sustain or, or what is the ringing, the way the note rings out or lasts like so to lose the, that audible you know the audible element of that happening is not as bad as destroying those best places with a trill because with the prop with the good performance with good interpretation with the good exe execution whatever i'd say the good interpretation or the good performance one can win back what one loses with that missing audible sound of the note. So he says that, he, he states it, like for all those Lilliput professors, even then, it's still worse to ruin the best and most singable passages with a trill. And it's, you know, yeah, that was then. Nowadays, it's different. How they ruin those passages is different. It's done in a different way. The variable has changed, but the constant is still a constant. And so Bach says, you know, there's many things in music that one has to imagine. Like when, 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 when a soloist is accompanied fortissimo, one doesn't, one, uh, one has to imagine them without actually hearing them, the, the soloist notes, or when it comes, when the orchestra comes in, he says, intelligent listeners compensate for this loss with the, with the power of their imagination. And when, when, when Bach says intelligent listeners, you know, there's a, a, a tendency, I think, a natural one, I'm not, but to think of, to be very condescending or feel very superior to those in the past. 
And I think it's similar to that, you know, there's that saying, a lot of people like that saying, with age comes wisdom. And I think the, the, this, it's the same sense that is, is in, a, in, a, in a person who, you know, who's around nowadays in 2023 20, or 22, whatever it is, because they have more years to their name than the people in 1700. They automatically feel superior to them. And, and when you think of the past, you think there's only Bach and Mozart and Beethoven and everybody else was an idiot. And so it, 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 do you not think it's weird to hear that in an audience listening to a concert that among those will be intelligent listeners and the rest will be the pampered ears, the ones who only can feel anything true noise and what will be the percentage could be you know 10% are intelligent listeners 90% are lilliput and it's not that those lilliput people you know they're they're spoon fed they want noise it's like you know a baby being spoon fed there's a certain rhythm to the spoon feeding and they're happy and they just want to be able to open their mouth get the food in swallow it, open it mouth and the food to come again right when they want it. And, you know, and if it doesn't work, then they get upset. They get, and you can see that with, with um, people nowadays, the older they get, what, what they achieve through their years is they are, they are able to better discern good spoon feeding from bad spoon feeding. They don't, and the thing is, they don't realize it's spoon feeding. They think it's their perception that they can tell who's a good spoon feeder and who's not a good spoon feeder. They don't even realize that it's spoon feeding what they're evaluating. And, and they see it as the, the years that they have means that they are much better. You know, they can, they see a baby being spoon fed and they feel far superior to that baby not because the baby is being spoon fed at all because they they themselves are still being spoon fed but they, that they see that that baby has no clue that they have a bad spoon feeder so they feel superior to the baby because they know a good spoon feeder from a bad spoon feeder spoon feeder so they'll get spoon fed by the best spoon feeders that makes them evolved that's the wisdom that they got through their years but the thing is, they don't realize they're being spoon fed. And a lot of people don't realize they're being spoon fed because you're just, and it makes sense. If everybody is spoon fed, it's normal to, to you don't even know you should stop it or it's something not to be done. And there'll be people who might get restless or uncomfortably being spoon fed, but they'll still allow themselves to be spoon fed because they don't know that it's not a natural state or it's, it's, it's not necessarily normal. So not everybody there will want to be a, a, a pampered ear, will want to be spoon fed, but they don't know how not to be because it's, it makes sense. If you, if you say to anybody, do you hear that? The first thing, the first answer you'll get back is hear what? You need to tell the people, people, you know, it's they're, they're, they're pampered ears because they're not learning. They don't know what to listen for. Lilliput is not telling them what to listen for. So all they hear is noise. And what they get in the, 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 the main lesson, when you get past the note reading and all those things, when you can like, let's say, envy a, a professor, for the lessons they have because their students are at a certain level. What you're envying is them. Basically, all they do is control the volume level of their students playing. It's like they have a remote control and, and there's only two buttons on, on that remote control, volume up and volume down. And that professor, he knows all the recordings. He copies all of the role of honor and he tells the student a little bit louder, a little bit softer. And you can see there that it's, they're only dealing in noise. So 
you, you're never going to know what to listen for. So, so you're only going to be that pampered ear who only responds to noise. And, and, may, and many a criticism, when it's not wrong notes, will be, that was too loud, that was too soft. Because they only understand volume levels. That is the noise. That is, you know, the modern equivalent of the trill. The trill is the variable here, the constant. The insight that Bach is sharing is the constant and it should not be dismissed just because the variable is different. Yeah, so people will think that those in the past are all idiots. So it must be, I, I could imagine it's very weird to think that there'll be intelligent listeners among them in the audience because there were no intelligent people back then. They didn't exist. History doesn't record any of that. Just like people won't realize that there were, you know, that, that they existed in the past. They were sitting in the audience there as those pampered ears who only know noise. But you're so evolved now because you're listening to the quality of the piano instead of the trill, but it's only a variable. It's all superficial and it, it is it's, it's all, it all happens from a person who, who doesn't know what to listen for, who doesn't hear anything, who doesn't make an effort to listen. But there'll have been those intelligent listeners in the audience who do know to listen, who are able to use their imagination and, and they are able to follow the line. And Bach says, here we get a, a, an idea a bit more about Bach. Bach says, these are the listeners who we should principally be, be striving to please. That's who Bach wants to please. And what, what will happen, those listeners with the good performance, they will hear a note and, and there won't be the audible sustain there, but they will hear the note, they'll pay attention to the note and with the good performance, they'll hear the next note and hear that it's, that it's connected. And with their imagination, they'll hear the singing that is, is coming true. And the same as well can be said for volume levels. If you're criticizing it because it's not pianissimo enough or something, the, the good performance, when you hear the good performance, that'll win back what's lost in, you know, this piano doesn't do pianissimo. I flirt with the boundary of, of its lower limit. And it is a very, it, it, it just, it, 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 it dies. It's, there, they, it has no p pianissimo. So I have to, I, I, you know, I'm just, it's just a, a range I, that's denied of, from me. So I can't deal with it. But the good performance um, over will win back what what's lost in that area because the, the intelligent listener can follow the notes they can hear the lines they can follow the shaping of the voices those who just listen to the noise are going to get turned off right away with mine personally because the noise the piano makes isn't so pleasant but i don't there's nothing i can do about that at the moment but the thing is, what Bach is saying, what you learn from Bach is, there's an audience there. And, um, you know, in that scenario where there is no sustain, audible sustain on the notes. And so what he is losing, what is happening there is that, yes, the intelligent listeners, the, the informed listeners, the insightful listeners, whatever you'd want to call them, they are able to compensate for that, that, that missing sustain. And, and they can hear the singing line that's brought out through the good performance. 
But the Lilliput people, the, the pampered ears, they still won't be able to hear it. And there's still not the noise that they need. The only way they can feel anything is through noise. And they always want to be in the same, they want the same noise coming at them all the time. Otherwise, it's, it means nothing to them. So that means in the scenario Buck is talking about, he is still losing the greater portion of his audience because the greater portion of them will be those pampered ears that he's talking about. He'll still lose them. The, the, the good performance will mean nothing to them because all, all, any, the only thing that means something to them is noise, a, a constant noise and being constantly kept in the same state. They're not able to experience anything else other than that. So Bach is going to lose them. And yet he still says he still won't add trills. He could add trills so he could win them and, 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 and maybe lose the, the 10% and win the 90%. But it shows you what what type of person Bach is. He says, no, you, your main concern should be those 10% and not the 90%. And as well, what you can see from that is how important that is what Bach is talking about of the singing quality of the weight and sustain of the good performance that that is it shows how valuable that is to him that he is prepared to um ignore lilliput um, and something that lilliput have is the numbers there's 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 masses of them there's there's lots of there's there are nearly no joint giants in the world but lots of Lilliput. What they have is numbers. That's so important to them that that doesn't matter to them. And 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 he he calls he, you know he describes it that those passages are the ideas that should be their gezogen on Matt for trag in Verden Saul. So Matt, I think, I, I just left it at that and I think that's a good term to describe it. And Matt describes that singing quality and, and you can use this to, to kind of have a better, a deeper understanding of trills and, and trills enliven the melody. But Matt, if you think of a, you know, the singing quality, like where it's, if, if, you know when 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 a, when a, when a, something is really kind of sits well on the voice and is real comfortable to sing it has a a matte quality and and then the notes are sung plain and and then there's a there's so much substance there that they don't need anything else and and some like a popular thing i could think of that comes to mind would be the amy winehouse back to black you know that would, is a very comfortable song to sing and you can hear her voice and all how you could describe that as Matt. Or another singer would be Rihanna who has that Matt quality in her voice. You know, and, 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 the, and the, the notes that she sings, the, the, the quality of them you know, you, you can you can hear with Rihanna how how much her the, the 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 way she sings fills how much space it fills and and that's that mat quality that Bach is talking about. And that to him is more important than the 90% of the listeners he's not gonna pander to. Where you'll hear other singers then who don't have that quality, that matte quality, and they'll have a lot more ornaments, you know, like the, 
whatever that style is it's very popular in, a, in america you know when you hear them sing the national anthem it's it seems to have really taken like be all the rage or there's the style in america of singing is is ornamenting the, the the singing line as much as possible and you can see those hear those voices they don't have that matte quality it's you know it's more up in the air than that and and that can be very um empty it's like too much sugar you know you want something savory once in a while and and and, and an excess of sugar can be like like leave you very you know sort of this unsatisfied hmm. Hmm. i don't know i just i just wanted to say those things you know like as food for thought to burn you know i'm not gonna these are, are things to contemplate over longer periods of time and you know in your search for understanding or, or figuring things out or having a, a deeper awareness or deeper insight into music Bach is what you are hearing here is Bach's insight they, these are not words to be taken lightly most people wouldn't be able to say these things that Bach is saying because they have no idea of their existence. He's, Bach has displayed how important what he's talking about is. He's given a clue as to what it is he's talking about. And, and, and he's also provided like with the basic knowledge you can have when then there's the the slur sign over the notes they should they they they're there to to prevent a trill being added to those notes so i'll end the video here and i'll pick up in the next one where I left off. Thanks. Bye.